Hi, Franke Park Foxes. It's Mrs. Palmer. This is my son, Noah. And today we're going to do some garden math. So here are a lot of our seeds that we buy and save. We have quite a collection. We've been gardening for a lot of years. And Noah is always around to help me. Um, right now it's time to start our tomatoes and our peppers. And I realize that there is some math involved, so we're going to have you help figure out some stuff. All right, first of all, this is a little greenhouse that the seeds will start in, and it's one of my favorite ways to start seeds. It looks like a little hockey puck, and when you add water, it will grow into a little pot, which you'll see at the end of the video. Um, the first thing I see here is that this is definitely an array. And one of the things that we know is that you can take an array and figure out how many total cells you have. So I'm going to have you pause the video, count your column and your row, and then figure out the math. Once you have it figured out, go ahead and unpause your video. Okay, you should have figured out the array. Noah is going to figure it out on our little whiteboard. So, as you hopefully counted, because I hope you can count, if you can't count, then um, you probably shouldn't be in fourth grade. Nice, <laughs> Noah. <laughs> Just okay. keep going. So, six columns, six rows, pretty basic. What is six times six, Noah? Well, the answer to that is... He's freezing up. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, after some difficulty, we figured out 6 times 6 is 36. The next math problem we have is a little more difficult, and it's definitely fourth grade level. So, we um, read on the package that you need to add enough hot water to this tray to make all of the disc grow into a little kind of like pot. So, the package told us that for every disc, they call it a cell, you need one eighth cup of hot water. So using what we have, one eighth cup, and there's 36 cells, Noah's gonna quickly write out the equation you need to use. So let's get him an eraser. All right, so one eighth cup of hot water my assistant is getting ready with his whiteboard. And let's go. One eighth times. Okay. So we need one eighth times, 30 times 36. And Noah, why don't you quickly give an explanation on how to do this? So if you didn't know already, to do this, well, we have to give 36 a denominator. So we'll just put a 1 because, you know, 36 is a whole, and 1 is also a whole. It's like the simplest whole. 0 is not a whole, just so you know. And you should know how to multiply fractions. 1 goes into 36, which should give you 36. 8 goes into 1, which should give you 8. If you didn't get that, then... I think you should check. So no, my fourth graders know this, but do you know what it means if the numerator is bigger than the denominator? Yes, that means you have an improper fraction. Ah, As my to... teacher likes to call it, a big-handed fraction. Oh, okay. So what do we do now? Well, you may have not known this, but this little fraction bar right here is actually, that actually means to divide. Ah, okay. So basically what I'm trying to say here is we're dividing 36 by 8. Let me just clean this up real quick. So we have 36 eighths. And we need to divide this. Uh, I'm going to do skip counting. So right now we have 0. We skip count by 1 to get 8, skip count by 2, we get 16, 3 equals 24, 
and then 4 equals 32. We want to find the closest number to this that's under this because 36, you can't multiply anything by 8 to get 36. Mm -hmm. So the smallest number that's closest to it, which in this case is 32, is the number we're looking for. Now, you okay, so should... So what did you multiply times 8 to get 32? Well, if you count the, like, bumps, you see there's 4. Which means that the whole number is 4. But no, we're not done yet. Oh, there's some left. 36. We have 36, not 32. Right. So it doesn't evenly divide. So how many 8s are left? Well, to find that out, you take 36, subtract it by 32 real quick, and oh. we get 4. So 4 8s. Can we make it smaller? Can you simplify 4 8s? Yes, I was actually just about to say oh. we're still not done. Okay. Because. Yeah, so again, this is a little dividing thing. So divide four by eight, and what do you get? Uh, something. <laughs> you get you get zero point five. That's too complicated. Okay. So really, just to simplify it, we find the biggest multiple that's for both of these. So the biggest and, common multiple. Yeah, the common multiple. Okay. And for 4, it's 4, because 8, it's 4. Okay. You can't have 8 on 4, because... So 4 times 4 what? is too small for an 8. 4 times what equals 4? Four? 4. 4 times... <laughs> 1. <laughs> okay, so we're still Sorry, just got confused a little bit. Sorry. Um, so that would be 1, and then... What times 8 equals... Wait, no. What, what times 4 equals 8? Two, uh, 2, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sorry about all the confusion. Okay, so video. all of this math is basically telling us what, Noah, what do we need four and a half of? We need four and a half cups because originally... Okay, so four it was and a one half cups cup, it was originally one is already cup. measured out. Grab it before it gets too much colder because this video is taking a lot longer than I expected. And go ahead and pour that hot water in our little um, greenhouse and... You'll be really shocked to see foxes, what these turn into after they've been soaking in some warm, actually okay. warm water. Okay, so let's pour it on, and we're going to let it sit, and we'll come back. Oh, some of them are falling. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's okay. You just tuck them back in their little places. Um, and then we'll come back in just water. a minute. Ooh, it's a bit hot. It's a bit warm. If you're wondering why... Uh, Miss Palmer can handle this. It's because she is also an excellent chef. Oh. As you can actually see, it's already starting to rise a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they're already poofing up a bit. So we're going to let them sit for a little bit. We'll be right back. Okay, apparently, it's already done. It only took one minute. But as you can see, they're all poofed up. And now we're ready to plant our tomatoes and peppers.